This is the first video on state space behaviours. The first chapter then demonstrated that there are a number of ways of generating state space models to represent linear systems and we describe state space models using this sort of form. So a state of vectors x or the derivative of a state of vectors x written as x dot can, is equal to some matrix A times the vector of states x plus some matrix B times a vector of inputs u. And you can also find the outputs as y equals some matrix C times the state vector x plus some matrix D times the state vector u, or so the input vector u. Now this <coughs> set of videos focuses on how the behaviours of this system link to the parameters in A, B, C and D. But you should note that we're going to assume that D equals naught throughout because this is typical with strictly proper systems. Eigenvalues and transfer functions. It was shown in video 1.5 that you can find an equivalent transfer function model from a state space model if all you want to do is represent the input output behavior. So this is the process. Here's the state space model again then x dot equals ax plus bu y equals cx plus du. If I take the plus transforms of this model and that should be straightforward by now. You'll notice that we get SI minus A times the Laplace transform of X equals B times the Laplace transform of U. So I can solve for the Laplace transform of the state vector X using this formula here. X equals SI minus A inverse B times U. Now in a similar way, if I want it, I can also find the Laplace transform of the output. An interesting point here is the poles of this system come from the determinant of SI minus A. And that should be obvious because you have an SI minus A inverse here. And another un interesting observation and a key one is that of course the poles that come from the determinant of SI minus A are of course the same as the eigenvalues of A. Because the eigenvalues of A come from solving the determinant of SI minus A equals zero. So in fact the poles of this system are the eigenvalues of A. So an interim summary. We expect the modes of behaviour of a state space model to be determined by the eigenvalues of the A matrix because they're the poles you get in your transfer function. Now, we're not going to get sidetracked by special cases where you have embedded pole zero cancellations in your state space model, or if you have repeated poles and non-simple Jordan forms and the like. You can look up those details in textbooks, but they're a bit of a distraction in general. We're also going to focus on constant inputs U of T, because that's enough to portray the key concepts. If you want to use more general dynamics for u of t, they will of course appear in the output and that makes the algebra much more messy. So what's our expectation then? If we're given a model and a constant u, so there it is, x dot equals ax plus bu and we're told that this u is a constant and we also know that you can find the eigenvalues by solving this equation here, the determinant of lambda i minus a equals zero, then the solution must take this form. We have a constant k, and that constant k corresponds to the fact that you have a constant u, and then we have components coming from each of the eigenvalues. You can see them there. So that's what we expect the solution to look like. Of course, the challenge is, what are these vectors w I. And that's what we're going to cover in the following. So again, using Laplace transforms, and we'll start by having no input because that makes the algebra easier. So we've got x dot equals ax, and we can solve for the Laplace transform using x of s equals si minus a inverse x of 0. And what we're going to do is simply evaluate this numerically to demonstrate that that is a good way of finding the response. However, it is rather inefficient because you've got to do 
matrix inverse, and you'll all realize that matrix inverse is rather boring and uh, lengthy in general. And you're also going to have a lot of inverse Laplace to do, which can also be rather tedious. It's implicit in the above that there's a concept of a state transition matrix, and that's important that you get used to that terminology, the state transition matrix, which is defined as follows. It basically tells you that you can find x of t from x of 0 by multiplying with some matrix phi of t. And clearly, looking at the expressions above, the definition of phi of t is here. It's the inverse Laplace of si minus a inverse. First example, then. You'll see we've given a straight into the formula. There's our a matrix. And we've said that phi of s equals si minus a inverse. And therefore, you get this expression here. SI minus A inverse. And I've done the algebra for you because I don't want to waste your time showing how to do matrix inverses. You can do that by yourself. So here's the result. Now, I'm going to separate that into the four different components. So you'll see I've got a 1, 1 component. There it is, S over S squared plus 3S plus 2. I've got a 2, 1 component. There it is, 1 over S squared plus 3S plus 2, and so on. And what I'm going to do next is say, I need to do the inverse Laplace. So you remember, if I write it here, phi of t equals the inverse Laplace of phi of s. So I've got to do the inverse Laplace of this phi of s. And to do inverse Laplace, we need to first separate it using partial fractions. So that's what I've done here. And you'll see there's the partial fraction expansion for the 1, 1. And next, the partial fraction expansion for the 2, 1, and so on. Now, having done the partial fraction expansion, the inverse Laplace is by inspection. And you'll see, therefore, that phi of t has got the following values. So you see the 1, 1, e to the minus, minus e to the minus t, plus 2 e to the minus 2t. Phi 2, 1, e to the minus t, minus e to the minus 2t. Phi 1, 2 minus 2 e to the minus t, plus 2 e to the minus 2 t, and so on. And already you're probably getting bored and saying, yikes, I hope I don't have to do this in an exam. Well, you might have to, because examiners often set examples of this level of difficulty to test that students can do the key steps. What about example 2? Now, you'll see now I've made the matrix A 3 by 3. So when I do SI minus A inverse, I've got a 3 by 3 matrix, and my determinant, or my denominator, is a cubic in S. Again, I'm going to need to do partial fractions, and here you're probably saying, yikes, because you'll notice I've had to do 9 partial fraction calculations, one for each component in the matrix. And that is certainly going to be tedious and not something that you want to do by hand. Now, of course, once you've done the partial fraction expansion, you can get these components fairly quickly. So I've got 0.5 e to the minus t here, minus 0.25 e to the minus 2t, plus 4.5 e to the minus 3t. So that's the 1, 1 element. And obviously, you can do the same for all the other elements. But the key point is this. It's very tedious and not a route I'd recommend you pursue in general. You need to know that this is one way of doing things. You need to know this is one way of deriving the state transition matrix, but you wouldn't tend to do it by hand. So we've demonstrated that given you have a formula x dot equals ax, then there exists a state transition matrix phi of t such that you can write x of t equals phi of t times x of 0. And we've shown that the state transition matrix phi of t can be written as Laplace inverse of Si minus A inverse. It's easy to show, moreover, that phi of t has got a number of properties, which could be useful, although we, we're not going to um, use them much. It's still important, perhaps, to show you what some of them are. So here's one important property that you might call a commutativity property. 
if I want to calculate phi of t1 plus t2, then I can calculate that as phi of t1 times phi of t2. Now the proof is fairly straightforward. You'll notice that x of t1 plus t2 is given by phi of t1 plus t2 times x of 0. But equivalently, I could say that x of t1 plus t2 is given by phi t1 times x t2. Now if that's not immediately obvious to you, perhaps pause the video and do a little graph and after a minute you'll probably think, ah oh, yeah, that is obvious. And similarly, x of t2 can be written as phi t2 times x of 0. Well if I take this x of t2 and put it into here, then what you'll find is that you've got phi t1, phi t2, x of 0. So you've proved that phi t1 plus t2 equals phi t1 times phi t2. Now in a similar way you can show that the inverse of phi of t is equal to changing the sign of the argument, so it's equal to phi of minus t. And you can use a similar sort of proof here, so I'm not going to dwell on it. Again, pause the video if you want to look at that box more slowly.